بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو يتولى الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فنواصل حديثنا حول أبواب الصيام من كتاب زاد المعاد في هدي خير العباد وللمناسبة بأننا مقبلون على شهر رمضان المبارك فندمج في قراءتنا لهذا الكتاب القيم ولصاحبه القيم رحمه الله ندمج فيه من كتب الفقهاء من أجل أن نضبط شروط وأركان وواجبات الصيام وكذلك مفسدات الصيام وهكذا. We are continuing our uh, topic, our current topic regarding the book Zad al Ma'ad fi Hadi Khair al Ibad due to our circumstances that we are uh, approaching the month of Ramadan. We have a few days left and this will be our last. Uh, installment of this class, inshallah ta'ala, until the month is completed. Uh, in its place and in its stead, I will be holding a tafsir class in tafsir Surah Al-Anbiya every night uh, after Salat Al-Asr for uh, the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So these months, these classes will be suspended until after Ramadan. And this is the last class we will be doing until after Ramadan, insha'Allah. And during the month of Ramadan, every day after Salat al-Asr, we will sit for about 40 or 45 minutes uh, in topic of tafsir regarding the surah, Surah al-Anbiya. In choosing uh, a topic for tafsir, tafsir is a very deep subject. It's a very important and crucial subject. Uh, it's mostly important for us to uh, explain and expound upon chapters of the Qur'an that we have all memorized. However, in order for us to go through a particular narrative that is of great pertinence to the month of Ramadan, we have chosen Surah Al-Anbiya, inshallah ta'ala. Due to the fact that we are approaching Ramadan, we will be, as we have in the past two classes, adding from the books of the fuqaha with regards to the rulings and conditions and pillars and obligations and so forth of Ramadan in order for us to be most possibly ready for uh, welcoming this great month that is upon us. <clears throat> من الأمور المهمة في شهر رمضان وهو أمر لا بد أن نتطرق إليه من أجل ما نجده عند بعض الناس أو عند كثير من الناس من الاضطراب في ابتداء وانتهاء شهر رمضان فكل منا له بلد وكثير منا يتصل ببلده ويصوم مع بلده ويفطر مع بلده أو مع السعودية أو مع الأردن أو هكذا والحق في ذلك أنه يجب على كل مسلم أن يصوم ويفطر مع أهل قطره الإنسان هنا في شيكاغو مثلا في هذه الجالية نصوم مع جاليتنا ونفطر مع جاليتنا وهذا هو الذي يجب علينا من المهم في هذا ما رواه الإمام الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى في جامعه بإسناد صحيح أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الصوم يوم تصومون والفطر يوم تفطرون وَالْأَضْحَى يَوْمَ تُضَحُّونَ 
وقد علق الإمام الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى على هذه الرواية بعد أن أسندها في جامعه في أبواب الصيام علق عليها بما معناه وما مفاده أن العلماء أولوا هذه الرواية وفسروها وفهموها بأنه يجب على الإنسان أن يفطر وأن يصوم مع عامة المسلمين في قطره ولا يتفرد الإنسان بالصيام والفطر دونهم An important thing for us to mention with regards to fasting is when do we begin fasting and when do we end our fast? We're speaking about the commencing of the month of Ramadan. When does it commence? And when does the month of Ramadan end? When is the day of Eid? This is an ongoing issue with uh, a group of people, if not a, a large group, a substantial group, that are confused with regards to this issue. Many of us have come from other countries, whether it be from Jordan or uh, Yemen or any of these countries, Palestine, and uh, many of us fall into a kind of conundrum when there is a difference of opinion with regards, an internationally different opinion with regards to the commence commencement of the month of Ramadan, the ending of the month of Ramadan. When should I start fasting? When should I end my fast? When does the month of Ramadan uh, come upon us. So many people will become confused when they hear of the month of Ramadan being announced in Saudi, being announced in Jordan, being announced in Yemen, and it is not announced here in America, or vice versa. And so <clears throat> it's important for us to take into account that the month of Ramadan commences when the people acknowledge it as the month of Ramadan. This is the fatwa of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah in Majmu' al-Fatawa, that the month of Ramadan does not commence with the birth of the crescent. The month of Ramadan commences with the acknowledgement of the masses of the Muslims that it has begun. This is an important topic. There should never be an instance when one Muslim is fasting and the larger mass of his community are not, or that the larger mass of his community are fasting and he is not, or that he begins his day of Eid and not fasting whilst the mass majority of his community are still fasting, and, and so forth. This is incorrect, and the correct opinion is that every place has its own community, and when that, ma when that major group or the, the majority of that community acknowledges that the month of Ramadan is on this day and they begin to fast, we fast with them. هذه مسألة يغفل عنها كثير من الناس وقد ذكر شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله في مجموع الفتاوى ورجح بعد تحقيق يطول أن الشهر على اسمه فمادة الشين والها والراء تدل على الظهور والانتشار فسمي شهرا لانتشاره وظهوره على الناس واعتقاد الناس بدخوله وإنما جعل الهلال علامة على دخول الشهر ففي الراجح لا يدخل الشهر بظهور الهلال وإنما يدخل عندما يشتهر دخول الشهر بين الناس ويعم وبنى قوله هذا ورجحه في مجموع الفتاوى 
وبناه على أحاديث وعلى أدلة هذا الدليل اللغوي الذي ذكره في أصل مادة الشين والها والراء ومعنى الاشتهار في أصل اللغة كذلك بهذه الرواية التي ذكرناها آنفا من حديث أبي هريرة عند الترمذي بإسناد صحيح الصوم يوم, يوم تصومون والفطر يوم تفطرون والأضحى يوم تضحون So, Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah, mentions that the month of Ramadan specifically and the month in general commences when it becomes acknowledged by the masses of the people. And so, he mentions a narration collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi on the authority of Abi Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said fasting is when you all fast and breaking the fast is when you all break your fast and Adha the day of Adha is the day when you all sacrifice the day of sacrifice is when you all sacrifice what does this narration mean? This narration means that a person is going to fast with the majority of his community. And a person is going to break his fast when the majority of his community break their fast. And a person is going to celebrate the day of Adha when the majority of the people celebrate the day of Adha. It is incorrect for a person to fast with another community and be the odd one in his own community. This defeats largely a great or one of the greater purposes of fasting all together in the same month. If a person were to fast, we know that we can fast and make up days of Ramadan that we miss we can make those days up any days throughout the year, correct? Any day throughout the year, we can make up those days. And so, we understand from this that what is intended by fasting is the amount of days, not necessarily the length of the days. So Ramadan can come in the winter, it can come in the summer, a person can could have missed a day of Ramadan during the longest days of the year and fast and make up that day during the shortest days of the year and it will be valid. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ayyaman ma'dudat he says fasting has been prescribed upon you all as it has upon those who have preceded you in order that you may attain taqwa and righteousness in a fixed amount of days a fixed amount of days the scholars of tafsir tell us that this wording a fixed amount of days articulates that what is intended is the amount of days and not necessarily the length of those days so if a person misses a day of ramadan when they should be fasting 12 hours and then they make that day up with a day that is short and only fast for eight hours or seven hours, that is a valid fast and it takes the day. So if we look at it from this angle, we could see that why was the month of Ramadan specified? Obviously it was specified for a number of reasons, but why specifically this month? In order that all of the Muslims fast together and break their fast together. Otherwise, we could be told, fast 30 days throughout the year. Just fast 30 days throughout the year, and people will fast as they choose. But this is not how it was obligated. It was obligated during a specific month in order for all of us to fast together. And so if we understand this, and then we start to fast with people that are not in our community, so we have a guy fasting and another person not fasting. 
this defeats one of the greater purposes of fasting the month of Ramadan. Does this make sense? No, there's no time limit. The opinion of the majority of the fuqaha is that a person may fast any makeup day of Ramadan during any time of the year. وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ أَنَّ وَهُوَ جُمْهُورُهُمْ أَنَّ الصِّيَامِ الَّذِي يَكُونُ قَضَاءً عَنْ أَيَّامِ رَمَضَانِ يَكُونُ وَاجِبًا عَلَى عَلَى الرَّخَاءِ يعني متى شاء لا يلزمه أن يصوم هذه الأيام مباشرة بعد انقضاء رمضان وانقضاء العذر The majority of the scholars hold the opinion that making up the days of Ramadan that have passed is obligatory, but it is obligatory at a person's discretion. Meaning they don't have to fast those days of Ramadan immediately after Ramadan. There's no limit. The only limit is the next Ramadan. So you have to have made those days up before the next year's Ramadan approaches. Otherwise, you can fast any day throughout those days. But the point here is that if we hear of, uh, you know, one of these major Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia has announced that today is the first day of Ramadan or tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan. And that is not the case in our community here, in our uh, area, then we would not fast with uh, Saudi, we would fast with our community. And likewise, we would fast with our, we would break our fast with our community. And so it's very, very important that we understand this wisdom behind fasting the month of Ramadan and when we break our fast. There shouldn't be a situation where a person is fasting Ramadan and the person next to him is not fasting. Or one person is having Eid and the next person is not having Eid. And we hear about this sometimes. Alhamdulillah, uh, that is largely, uh, largely taken care of here in this community. There's been, a, there's been an agreement amongst uh, the majority of the masajid here in Chicago, including this masjid, that we all fast together and we all break our fast together. Alhamdulillah. However, this is an important issue for us to take into, into consideration that we fast when the majority of our community fasts and we break our fast when the majority of our community breaks its fast. We do not fast alone. We do not break our fast alone. And this resolves a lot of issues that come up, not just issues of who's fasting and who's not fasting. I've seen uh, instances where people in the same house, some of them are fasting and some of them are having Eid in the same day, right? And I've seen instances where some people are still not fasting and the other people have begun Ramadan in the same house, let alone in the same masjid or in the same area. This is something which is incorrect. And when we have issues that come up such as the day of Eid, is a day off for the kids at school. So the schools will, you know, the government will make it a public ho holiday or a holiday for the Muslims for the commencement of Ramadan. So when is Ramadan? Well, we don't know. We have to tell you a day before. When is uh, the end of Ramadan? We, we have to wait and see. And so we have some kids that are going for Eid, some kids who are not going for Eid. And so this is uh, largely problematic, and it's something that should be taken into account. When you live in a community, you attend a masjid, you are in an area, you fast with the people of that area, irrespective of what is happening elsewhere. There is a narration in Sahih Muslim in which Abdullah ibn Abbas ta'ala had uh, arrived to uh, a sham where Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu was and 
the people in Medina had began fasting a particular day, while the people in Asham had not begun fasting yet. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said, مَا مَفَادُهُ لِكُلٍ مِنَّا رُؤْيَةٍ أو لكل منا صوم ففهم الفقهاء من هذه الرواية بمعنى الرواية فهم الفقهاء من هذه الرواية ومن غيرها أن الإنسان يصوم مع مع قطره If you are a resident of Chicago and you go overseas during the month of Ramadan who should you fast with? You fast with wherever you're at right? If you are in uh, Saudi, you will fast with the people in Saudi or Yemen or Al-Urdun or Turkey or wherever people go. If you are going to Ohio, you will fast and break your fast with the people there. The point is, is that everyone should be on the same page when they are together. This is what is important. Allahu A'lam. We mentioned the pillars of fasting. We said there are two pillars to fasting. The first is... النيّة ولا بد أن تبيّت النيّة قبل قبل فجر يوم الصوم لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث في حديث حفصة رضي الله تعالى عنها وهو حديث صحيح أخرجه الإمام أحمد وأصحاب السنن وصححه ابن خزيمة وابن حبان وغيرهما من حديث حفصة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من لم يجمع الصيام قبل الفجر فلا صيام له وذكرنا ما يفهم من هذه الرواية فلا بد للإنسان أن يكون مجمعا نيته قبل فجر يوم قبل فجر يوم صومه The first pillar of fasting is intention and we mentioned that intention has to have been had prior to the, to the break of dawn, of the day in which he intends to fast. And we mentioned the narration of the Prophet ﷺ in that. There is another issue, and that is, what if a person is unaware that tomorrow is fasting? that tomorrow is the beginning of Ramadan. And so the person uh, wakes up, they're going through their day, and then they realize that this is the month of Ramadan. Everybody is fasting, and so they begin to fast when they hear that the month of Ramadan has begun. Do they have to make that day up or not? يعني ثم مسألة ذكرها العلماء رحمهم الله تعالى وهي مسألة يعني تلم ببعضنا وذلك أن الإنسان إذا أصبح يومه ولم يدري بدخول رمضان ثم إذا انتصف يومه أو إذا علم بدخول رمضان بعد أذان الفجر هل عليه قضاء لذلك اليوم أم يبتدئ بالإمساك والصيام من حين أن يظهر له أن أن اليوم يوم صيام أن اليوم يوم صيام هل يجب عليه القضاء أم لا يجب خلاف بين الفقهاء والذي رجحه شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله أنه لا قضاء عليه وإنما يبتدئ صومه حينما يظهر له أن وقت الصيام قد دخل فحينئذ يمضي في صيامه وليس عليه قضاء ولله الحمد Regarding this issue, the correct opinion that uh, in the view of Sheikh al-Islam rahimah Allah is that a person begins fasting immediately when he re re recognizes that fasting is to begin and the person does not have to make up that day. So for instance, a person goes to bed, they are unaware that uh, tomorrow is fasting, right? So they go to bed and they 
you know, don't, don't know that tomorrow is the day of fasting. They wake up, they go through their routine, they eat breakfast, whatever it is, and eight, nine o'clock in, in the morning, they realize that today is actually the first day of Ramadan. Does this person have to make up that day or not? It's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars of Islam. The opinion which was bolstered and chosen and adopted by Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah is that the person does not have to make that day up. Rather, the person is to begin his fasting immediately as he knows to cease from anything that will break his fast, to hold the intention, and the person will have that day considered as a valid day of fasting. They do not have to make that day up. <clears throat> Another thing that comes up, and here we are kind of tying up loose ends. We've discussed a lot of the uh, basics of fasting. We're just tying up some loose ends to kind of prepare ourselves for the coming month. مسألة شاعت بين الناس واختلفوا في هذه المسألة اختلافا كثيرا وذلك إذا كان الإنسان له عذر في الإفطار ثم زال ذلك العذر هل يجب عليه الإمساك بقية يومه أم لا ونمثل على ذلك بمثال كان الإنسان مريضا مثلا أو يحتاج أن يتناول دواء أو علاجا يفطره فتناول ذلك العلاج على الساعة الثامنة أو التاسعة صباحا ثم لا يلزمه شيء من العلاج بعد ذلك هل يجب عليه أن يمسك بقية يومه كذلك المرأة لو كانت حائض لو كانت حائضة حائضا في أول النهار ثم انقطع حيضها عند الظهر مثلا هل يجب عليها أن تمسك عن المفطرات إلى إلى المغرب أم يجوز لها أن تمضي في يومها مفطرة تتناول ما شاءت من الطعام والشراب وما شاكل ذلك ثم تقضي ذلك اليوم ما هو الصحيح؟ الصحيح في ذلك ما قاله ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال من أفطر في أول نهاره فليفطر في آخره ولا يجب على الإنسان الإمساك إذا كان له عذر في أول نهاره ثم زال ذلك العذر فإنه يجوز له أن يمضي في فطره بقية يومه ولا بأس عليه وإنما ذكر العلماء أن المرأة مثلا إذا زال حيضها في منتصف النهار يجوز لها أن تتناول ما شاءت من الطعام والشراب وهكذا إلا أنها لا تفعل ذلك بين الناس أو لا تفعل ذلك أمام أولادها وما أشبه ذلك حتى لا يقع في قلوب أبنائها مثلا يقع في قلوبهم شيء من شيء من الإشكال فهذا من الأدب ولكن من باب الحلال والحرام فإنه يجوز لها أن تمضي في فطرها في ذلك اليوم وذكرنا ما ذكره ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه في هذا من أفطر في أول نهاره فليفطر في آخره Another issue that comes up often is the issue of a person who has the permission to break his fast during the day. Let's say, for instance, uh, a woman is, is having her menstrual cycle. And at around Dhuhr time, her menstruation ceases. Does she have to begin fasting for the rest of the day? Or can she break her fast for the rest of the day? The correct opinion, the opinion of 
many of the companions, Ibn Mas'ud amongst them. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, whoever has broken his fast at the beginning of the day, then he is permitted to break his fast at its end. And what this means is that if a person is traveling, for instance, and they arrive home in the middle of the day, and they had broken their fast in the morning, they had a, a, uh, they had a permission, an allowance from Allah to break their fast at the beginning. Do they have to begin fasting until the end of the day, or can they continue to eat and drink whatever they like until the next day? The, the correct opinion is that they do not have to begin fasting. They can break their fast at the end of the day, just as they did in the beginning, because they had a legitimate excuse, a permissible, they have done something permissible at the beginning of the day, and they have to make this day up. So the rest of the day, they can break their fast as well. This happens often, uh, as we mentioned, someone who is traveling, someone who is ill, someone who has to take some medicine. Let's say a person has to take some medicine at 9 or 10 o'clock. They have some doctor's appointment. They can't push it to outside of Ramadan. They go to it. They are given some kind of something that will break their fast. Do they have to fast for the rest of the day? No. They break their fast and they can continue to break their fast throughout the day. However, لكن هذا لا ينطبق على من ليس له عذر شرعي. يعني مثلا إنسان غلبته نفسه فأفطر متعمدا. هل يجوز له أن يفطر فيما بعد ذلك؟ لا. وجب عليه الإمساك على الفور. ويجب عليه كذلك أن يقضي ذلك اليوم بعد انقضاء الشهر. فهذا لا يكون هذا الحكم لا يكون إلا لمن له عذر شرعي من سفر أو مرض أو قتال وهكذا مما جاء في الشريعة أما من ليس له عذر شرعي فأفطر متعمدا فإنه قد مارس كبيرة من كبائر الذنوب وعليه أن يتوب إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وعليه أن يمسك على الفور بقية يومه. So if a person, this does not apply to a person who breaks his fast purposely without a legitimate excuse. Let's say a person just feels like they want to break their fast or they don't even begin fasting that day. Does this person, can this person, if they broke their fast unrightfully at the beginning of the day, continue to break their fast throughout the day? No. This person must begin to fast immediately and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person has a legitimate excuse, such as uh, illness or travel or any of the excuses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, this person does not have to fast throughout the day. They may break their fast and maintain the breaking of their fast, even if that illness or that travel has ceased. Yes, they have to make that day up because they had a legitimate excuse to break their fast that day. They make that day up later. But a person who does not have an excuse and breaks his fast, he must fast for the rest of his day and he must make that day up as well. Now. مسألة أخرى منتشرة بين الناس ويحصل التخبط في والاضطراب في تصور هذه المسألة عند الناس وذلك الحائض والنفساء أو النفساء هل يجب عليهما القضاء أم الفدية أم القضاء والفدية؟ وهذه مسألة يحصل كثير من التشويش بين الناس فيها والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رخص للحائض والمرضع والنفساء رخص النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عفوا 
للحامل والمرضع رخص لهما الفطر فيجوز لهما أن يفطرا إذا كانت المرأة حاملا كانت المرأة مرضعة فيجوز لها أن تفطر لكن كيف تقضي أتقضي فقط أم تفدي فقط أم تقضي وتفدي أقوال للعلماء لكن الصحيح أنها تقضي عليها القضاء فقط متى يكون لها الفدية يكون عليها الفدية إذا لم يزل عنها ذلك العذر حتى جاء رمضان آخر كيف يعني مثلا يعني في النساء مثلا تكون حامل وبعد ما تحمل بدها ترضع سنتين وبعد ما ترضع سنتين بتحمل كمان مرة وبعد ما تضع بدها ترضع كمان سنتين وهكذا تدخل في دوامة وبعض النساء عليها ثمان سنين صيام عليها سبع سنين عليها أربع سنين كيف تفعل هذه هل عليها القضاء أم عليها الفدية هذه عليها فدية كما أفتى بذلك جمع كبير من الصحابة رضي الله عنهم منهم ابن عمر وجابر بن عبد الله وأبو هريرة وغيرهم رضي الله تعالى عنهم كما ذكر ذلك الإمام الطبري في تفسيره رحمه الله وقاسوها قاسوا حالها على المريض المرض المزمن فعليها الفدية لكنها إذا كانت حاملا فوضعت حملها واستطاعت الصوم ولم ترضع مثلا أو لم يؤثر فيها الصيام في إرضاعها فعليها القضاء فقط فعليها القضاء فقط وذلك شريطة أن تستطيع ذلك قبل دخول رمضان الذي يليه لكن إذا دخل عليها سنتان فأكثر فعليها الفدية فحسب There is an issue that is often confused and that is a woman who is breastfeeding or is pregnant she ha she, it is permissible for her to break her fast however how does she recompense for that fast that she has missed should she merely make those days up or should she pay the fidya should she pay the the fidya or should she pay the fidya and make those days up these are three opinions of the scholars of the fuqaha the correct opinion is that a woman who breaks her fast due to pregnancy or breastfeeding she merely makes those days up she merely makes those days up she breaks her fast during the month of Ramadan due to breastfeeding or due to being pregnant she merely makes those days up when does she not make those days up she will not make those days up if she starts to accumulate more than one year's worth of fasting so for instance a woman is pregnant during Ramadan and then after Ramadan she has her baby and now she's going to breastfeed and so she breastfeeds now for two years she misses another Ramadan and then she gets pregnant again and so forth she goes into this kind of cycle a woman may end up with seven or eight years worth of fasting seven months six months this woman will not make up fasting in this case merely she will pay al kafara she will pay al fidya which is to feed a poor person for every day which she missed and this is the fatwa of many of the companions such as Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira and Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhum as was mentioned by al-imam al-tabari rahimahullah and others and these companions viewed her state to be similar to the terminally ill the terminally ill someone who has an illness that they are not expecting this illness to go away 
or this is an illness which will last three or four years. This person does not make those days up. This person merely pays the kafara or pays the, pays the fidya. And so a woman who has this issue, she's not ill, she's not terminally ill. However, she has the same situation as a person who is terminally ill. So she will take the same ruling as these companions and others have, uh, have mentioned, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. In closing, يجب علينا أن نحترم هذا الشهر العظيم. يجب علينا أن نعظم هذا الشهر. ولا يعظم هذا الشهر بالصيام فحسب. وإنما المقصد في هذا الشهر الصيام والتقرب إلى الله بالصيام وبغير الصيام من العبادات. يجب علينا أن نسعى في طاعة الله واجتناب معاصي الله ومن كان منا له عذر في عدم الصيام لا يعني ذلك أنه محروم من بركة رمضان من كان له عذر في الإفطار في رمضان أو لا يستطيع أن يصوم لا يمنع عنه ذلك من الاجتهاد والسعي على حسب حاله في التقرب إلى الله بقراءة القرآن والصدقة وأداة الزكاة والإحسان والصلاة وما شاكل ذلك ولا يمنع عنه ذلك من اجتناب معاصي الله وهجر العوائد التي تغضب الله وتسخط الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس يعني أنه لا يستطيع الصوم أنه لا يستطيع التقرب إلى الله يستطيع التقرب إلى الله وهذا شهر مبارك على أهله نسأل الله تعالى أن يبارك لنا في هذا الشهر العظيم نرجو الله تعالى أن يقربنا إليه فيه وأن يجعلنا من عتقائه وأهلنا من النار في هذا الشهر العظيم والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين